Hey everyone, um, I, I'm Joe and I've been in some previous videos you guys have watched and today I am here with... My name is Blythe and I am a physics grad student at The Ohio State University and I do computational biophysics research and I'm excited to be here. So, okay, so today uh, we're going to be having a little fun playing the Pong game. So, and a little note, don't sue us Atari, it's, it's <laughs> all you, not us. Um, but one of the things we, although we're going to be having some fun today playing the Pong game, but we want to uh, obviously learn a little bit while we're doing it. So we want to teach you guys a little bit about, you know, how gases work and how, you know, everything, you know, there's gas in the room we're in, there's gases in the air, you know, um, all around you and, it's, and they're flying all over the place, they're bouncing off the walls. Um, so we kind of want to teach you guys about how that works with this game in mind. So to start off, we're going to do probably the worst vo worst version of Pong ever. Um, we'll show you why it's the worst version ever here in a sec. So we'll click on the link and take it to that. So then here is our, take a look at our code and we'll actually just minimize this so you can see more of the code. Um, so just some info, some brief info on the code and what everything is. So we have our x and y position defined there. We have our uh, x and y velocity here, both uh, both start at zero, uh, v speed, and then here's something also very important that we have uh, delta t. So what that's going to be is our change in time, and we're going to use that a little later on to change our position. We just have that defined as point one right now. Then uh, below that, we have some more info and just like the, the blob and how big the blob is, uh, the paddle that you use in the game and how big it is and where it starts. Um, and so we're just gonna run that for a little bit right now just to see how uh, the ball moves around um, kind of in a random, random directions every time you do it. Um, it just moves off to the bottom right run it again and it moves off you know, to the top right and then as we run it you can do the same thing you can see at the bottom of the screen uh, using the left and right arrow keys will move the uh, paddle around um, so then going back over to our code over here um, we have our draw function so then what under that we just have our x and y positions with uh, our you know, velocity in the x-direction times our delta t, which is our change in time. So that'll help us uh, change our x-position and position, and then the same thing with the y. Below that, we just have some if statements, which uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. And then uh, some of these if statements down here, which will help, help us move the paddle, as we saw before. Um, and then a couple lines of code to draw the blob and then draw the line. All right, so now that we've had a little overview of all this different coding, we need to figure out what these actually these if statements are actually going to do for us. And to talk about that, Blythe's going to give you a little overview of it. Okay, so as we saw, what we're missing is for the blob to interact with the sides of our box once it hits them. So hopefully, these if statements will guide us through how we change the blo the blob's trajectory once it hits the sides of our box or the paddle. So let's look at this first one here. We have this condition here of y plus the blob radius is greater than some height. So again, the y, y coordinate is referring to the y position of our blob. Um, and we saw in the notes that the blob radius is pretty small. So we'll get the same physical picture if we just consider the blob radius being zero. So y is greater than some height, something happens. Um, so probably the height is referring to the height of the box. And if the pos vertical position of the blob goes above that height, something happens, is what I'm getting from the statement. So that probably means that this is referring to a collision of the blob with the ceiling of the box. So we can test whether that's what this if statement is going to be um, triggered upon by modifying these velocities and seeing if um, the blob reacts how we expect it to. 
So if we uncomment these and replace these question marks with zeros, then we can test this hypothesis and see if the vertical position of the blob um, hits the ceiling and goes above this height, we're, um, we're guessing, then it will come to a dead stop. So in the next time step, its velocities will be set to zero and should just sit at the ceiling. So we're going to pull this over and run this code. And we'll see. Oh, okay. So I didn't hit the ceiling. We'll have to keep going until we get a initial trajectory that's towards our towards the top there. And there we go. So did what we expected to that um, the statement here that we added of it stopping does indeed correspond to it hit to it hitting the ceiling. So now let's figure out what these other if statements, what scenarios they are referring to. So we can look at this second one here. Um, and this one is a little different. So we have if x minus blob radius is less than zero or x plus blob radius is greater than width, then something happens. And I said or when I came across this vertical bar. So that's what, um, that's the type of statement that this um, symbol is referring to. So if you've never seen an or statement before, it might be a little confusing. To give you a better feel for it, we can look at something that, um, you know, kind of puts this in the context of how we use, you know, ors in... in Here's a more familiar example. Yeah, so he, if you've never seen an or statement before, he, this is um, a more familiar statement that might give you a better feel for what it's doing. So here it says, if the teacher says I can leave early or the bell rings, then I print, I can go home. Um, so what it's doing here is that it's giving two conditions. The teacher says I can leave early and the other condition is the bell rings. And this or statement means that only one of these has to be true for me to then execute the statement. And in that case, I go home. So that's what is what's happening here in our code where we have this condition of the position, the x position of the blob is being compared to zero. And the other condition is the x position of the blob is being compared to this width. And either one of those things has to be true. And then we can execute what is um, what's written beneath here. So they don't have to be true simultaneously. And as we kind of guessed before, so as we just did, we're going to try and figure out what um, situation this if statement is referring to. Okay, so let's look at this first one. Um, it's comparing the horizontal position to zero. And again, we're going, we can omit the blob radius because it's small and it's not gonna change our physical picture here. Um, and in the second one, we have, we're looking at the horizontal position of the blob with respect to the width. So again, I'm, from context, we can kind of guess that this is wants to do something when the blob goes past the left side and it wants to do something when the um, blob goes past the right side. All right, so again, we can guess, we can check our guess that these statements refer to collisions with the sides of the box. 
And since we want to, okay. So let's take a look at our blob's path and we'll see what it does when it hits a wall. Okay, and it stops. Um, so before when we were running, um, when we were checking our previous guess about the if statement, it would just run off the screen when it hit the wall and now it doesn't. So our guess about that statement referring to the sides is correct. And we can check that it, when it hits the other wall, it's also going to stop. So there we go. So it's looking at two different um, scenarios and it's doing the same thing um, when those are triggered. So now that we've done our if statements for both the, the two sides of the box as well as the ceiling, um, we can look at this next if statement, which uh, just looking at it, we see Y paddle, X paddle, and paddle width. So this probably has to do with being, allowing us to bounce the blob then off the paddle here at the bottom. Um, and you'll also notice if you look at this uh, if statement that you have the Y minus blob radius less than the paddle, and then you have this symbol, this ampersand symbol. So what that tells us is this is, instead of the or statement like we had before, we have an and statement. So this is basically combining uh, these two statements. So to give you a more general uh, textual uh, example of what this is, we have this right here. So if you like physics and you like coding, go to Ohio State and study computational physics. Or if you like physics and like coding, go to Mount Union and study <laughs> computational <laughs> physics. Either one's fine by me. but you get the general idea. Rather than it being two statements, so you have if or that, and you have uh, one or the other can lead you to the final condition. Here we have if we have this and, so we need these, the second condition to also occur for us to get to the final statement or final condition, whatever it is. So back here, if we have, we, we need our y minus our blob radius to be less than uh, the y paddle, and we also need the absolute value of the x minus the x paddle to be left less than half of the paddle width. So then if we, we can do the same thing we were doing previously and we can uncomment our x velocity and our y velocity and change that to zero and see if that gives us what we would want. So then we can run that over. So I'm going to play this and then I'm going to try and move the paddle. So I'm going to see, try it again, see if we can get the, got to be quicker than that, obviously. <laughs> so I'm going to try one more time to see if I can get it to bounce off the paddle. So oh, nice. So you see there, if you have the paddle underneath it, then it just stops like it did with both the ceiling and with the two sides.